Hello Jokers, thanks for watching this episode of Jokers Physiotherapy. Today I wanted to share with you a condition called idiopathic condylar reabsorption. So what this is, uh, it's, it's, short, it's ICR, ICR, idiopathic condylar reabsorption. So this is very uh, much specific to a certain population young adolescent, adolescent girls and uh, young females. So we don't really know. It, as the name suggests idiopathic, it means we just don't know why it happens. But what happens is basically the jaw joint is made up of, I'll show you these. Condyle lower jaw bone called a mandible has a place called a condyle and the disc is this blue thing and sits in the articular eminence of temporal temporal bone okay so that is temporomandibular joint so in this condition icr icr the condyle seem to almost melt away. We don't know why it happens. It also makes the ramus, the ramus shorter. Yes. So uh, it also sometimes affects the coronoid process, which is this bit, and it it makes you uh, with uh, the, it makes the person with the ICR uh, to have an anterior open bite meaning they can't close their mouth and stays open okay so uh, it is obviously a dysfunc a se serious dysfunction because obviously it affects the chewing the bite which causes mouth occlusion uh, and obviously uh, there are some research is suggesting that uh, basically 80 up to about 88 percent of people with idiopathic Condylar reabsorption will have jaw joint problem, uh, and we still don't know why. And there's always an uh, issue with what's the best approach. Uh, obviously, it depends on the severity, but it can be a combination of different surgical procedures, uh, such as orthognatic surgery, meaning they. Uh, they do something to do with the bone of the condyle to try and change the length of the condyle or ramus to uh, have more uh, length so that the jaw can function properly. Uh, uh, but if that condition is advanced and the condyles have had severe arthritis because of the condylar reabsorption, you may need a total jaw joint replacement. Uh, jury's out, we don't know why, why it happens, but uh, from a physiotherapy point of view, we can't stop the bony uh, degeneration process or uh, subsequent jo joint uh, condition worsening, but we can definitely change, because of those bony issues, uh, joint be may become stiffer, may pa become painful, we can definitely deal with those and keep you as functional as possible. And that may be all it needs to for people with ICR to function normally. So uh, this is a uh, I'm just guessing, and it, this is obviously no way scientifically proven. But I wonder because the research so far doesn't say whether these pe these girls, uh, young uh, adolescent girls, females, or young females. Uh, who start to have these issues may have had possibly uh, Botox injections for tightness in the jaw joint or ju for for beauty aesthetic reasons I wonder I really do wonder but there aren't researches that are uh, even looking at that and the relationship with ICR um, obviously this is there are some researches that are that have suggested that uh, having Botox injections to your jaw muscles 
for aesthetic reasons or because of their tightness they feel and uh, by the way none of those injections do solve why you're feeling tight in the first place by the way physios we will look at why you're feeling tight in the first place obviously that means it's going to take a long time to solve the issue sometimes but often it is a combination of uh, the origin of the problem maybe in the neck referring to your jaw as tightness so I'll, I stress this very strongly that none of the injections to the jaw uh, namely to the masseter muscle or temporalis solve why you're feeling tight in the first place and I this is I feel like this is my responsibility to really encourage and ed educate people out there that please do not go ahead uh, rush to having injections uh, because we don't know the long-term effects none of the researchers even thought researchers have probably thought there's only one article I can find in the recent times from the Republic of uh, Korea uh, South Korea that they 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 these researchers they are actually not dentists they're orthopedic surgeons the doctors uh, trained as medical doctors they looked at this and they're thinking that uh, there's a bony change to the mandible the density of the bone changes because they actually shut the muscles down and as you know bone can only grow and stay dense and strong if it's constantly being stressed the body is too efficient if it's not uh, if it's not being stressed in your jaws case it's chewing talking clenching biting um, then the bone starts to wear away as in the body says okay let's your your mandible and the jaw joint hasn't been stressed enough we don't need so much calcium in the bone and therefore uh, it starts to uh, dissolve the bone from the mandible as it's shown that it actually wastes your muscles away and it thins the muscle, thins the masseter temporalis. If you have the Botox injection, in this instance, this research has done one, two, two masseters and one, two, two temporalis uh, once and then another one in six months. And they checked the bone density before the injection, zero month and at 12 months. They've discovered the muscle wastes away and becomes thinner both in temporalis and, and masseter, these chewing powerful muscles, uh, they can produce up to 125 kilograms of force if you clench the hardest to the back teeth and front teeth, 25 kilograms. Two, because it's not be able to use, uh, muscle wastes away. Like any other muscles in our body, if we train, it gets stronger and, and bulkier, and if you're not training, they get thinner disuse atrophy is what what's happening and in response to that because muscles are not able to produce enough force which translate into or trans uh, it goes into your jaw joint and the mandible and the maxilla they become brittle wastes away so uh, uh, I was wondering if this is the case but really this one is one of the hopefully first well first strike for not using Botox uh, unless it's absolutely the, the, the final decision that you have to make we don't know the long-term effects of the Botox when it's done basically uh, two injections over six months but the effect is long-lasting negative effect can be long-lasting so, uh, thank you for watching this episode. Uh, I hope people can uh, be a bit more informed and I strongly suggest that you come, uh, go and see a manual therapist or a musculoskeletal expert uh, who sees, uh, at best will be jaw, um, uh, the, the uh, physiotherapist or physical therapist in the United States or, or other countries uh, and uh, 
get a proper musculoskeletal assessment. Okay, uh, hope uh, this it was informative uh, for people who are suffering from different conditions. Uh, yes, uh, so this again, uh, I mean, I just went off the track a bit, but uh, this was for idiopathic content reabsorption people. I, um, um, I, I just wonder if there is a connection between that and possibly Botox injection. Now, if you know any more about this, please let me know uh, if you could uh, contact me uh, via email at uh, info at metrophysiotherapy.com.au or via my website www.metrophysiotherapy.com.au. So, thanks for watching this episode of Joker's Physiotherapy. Uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you at the next episode of Joker's Physiotherapy. Cheers!